I remember the first time I fell in love. It was fantastic. I remember exactly where I met the love of my life far away in an alleyway in Rome. It was nighttime, and we were the only things in the world at that moment. I had had my first taste of gelato. I had it every day I was in Italy and had developed severe addiction to it. After I was forcefully removed from Italy and brought back home, I immediately went to the store to try gelato. When I tried it, though, to my utter dismay, it was nothing like the stuff back in Italy. After going through months of mild depression from the lack of good gelato, I decided to do something to change it. I decided to start my own gelato business. I didn't really know how to make a business or what to do, but I decided it'd be cool to have one, and it couldn't be that hard. Soon, all I could think about was creating my own gelato empire. This seemed as if it would be easy enough because a gelato business appeared as if it would be a good business to get into. There's far more brand loyalty in gelato than most food items, and the food, in food industry itself is already renowned for its brand loyalty. Plus, running a gelato business sounded fun. It's a gelato business. It can't not be fun. To start, I decided to buy a gelato maker and just start making gelato. I started tweaking my recipe, changing the churn speed and the proportions of ingredients until I finally had the best recipe possible. I then, though, had an existential crisis. I had not the slightest clue on what to do next. Where would I make it? How would I transport it? Where would I sell it? How would I sell it? All of a sudden, I realized that creating my gelato empire may be a little bit harder than I initially anticipated. To deal with this sudden revelation, I started looking online for places that claim they made gelato. While I would make it out of my home, it's illegal to do so since you can't sell a frozen item in the store that, hasn't, that isn't made at a facility that is USDA and FDA certified. Eventually, after a few months of looking, I finally found a small quality place in Ohio that can make my product. I had production solved. The problem, though, was that Ohio is still pretty far away from Illinois. While it's so close for food industry standards, that's a long way to transport gelato. Transporting gelato is difficult because it is frozen and therefore cannot be allowed to melt. If gelato melts before it gets to the, to the store, then it must be thrown out. To solve this dilemma, I started looking excessively online for cold storage distributors who could transport my product. Finally, I found an overly complicated chain of companies that could bring my gelato here. Now I had two questions off my list. I have solved dis distribution and production, and I only had to figure out how to sell it and where to sell it. I started looking on Google for high-end boutique stores, and eventually I found one. I was going to make my first pitch. At 8 a.m. in the morning, I shuffled up out of my car, crawled into the door, and slithered to the owner, Dominic, an old Italian man who speaks with a thick Italian accent. I handed him a dozen pints and meekly whispered, Hi, Mr. Poeta. Want to try some of my gelato? We said a few more lines before I sprinted out the door and back into my car. In my mind, it was unbelievably successful. I had made my company's existence known to the world, or at least started the process of doing that. Encouraged by this massive success, I repeated this a few more times before finally on the third time asking, can I sell my gelato in your store? To which he responded, oh yeah, sure. I was ecstatic on the inside. The problem was though, I didn't really know what comes next. So I'm in your store, but what happens now? I asked him, so do you want me to stock it? He said, okay, sure, stock it over there, pointing towards the entire frozen section. I walked over, not quite sure where to put it. It wasn't as if there was a hole there, magically waiting for me to put my gelato. Finally, I decided that the only other frozen dessert at the time was taking up far too much space, and I crammed it into the side to make room for my own. After that, I sprinted back in my car. I was ecstatic on the inside. I was in a real store selling a real product. I was in certifiable business. My gelato empire had started. From there, I have quickly expanded to where I am now in over a dozen stores across the Chicagoland area. Now, throughout this entire experience, I've learned a lot of really important things. This entire time, I've always been on the verge of disaster. I've learned that nothing gets easier over time, and the, and the challenges you have now will be dwarfed by the challenges you have in the future. The gelato business is an absurdly oversaturated market that really requires you to think out of the box if you don't want to be completely drowned out by the limitless, dif limitless competition. To differentiate yourself really requires you to come up with unique solutions to sudden unexpected problems. Problems will come up which you will never have expected. For example, a few months ago, my distributor at the time ruined thousands of dollars worth of product. They somehow, in an awe-inspiring display of ineptitude, forgot that gelato is frozen let all my product melt. This wasn't something that could be overcome in a day, 
or a week or a month. This was something that brought my entire business to the verge of destruction. But instead of giving up and accepting my fate, I decided to fight back. I stood up straight and tried as hard as I could, and slowly I've been able to survive and regain my previous pace. Through trying as hard as you can, I learned that you can avoid disaster. Thank you so much.